watching race three, the third and final round six of the Shell Championship Series, and Lounce has cleared out into XR6, XR8 corner. On the top end of the circuit, there's the gap. Well, we just about saw it. Back to teammate Mark Scape. Now, must be a little bit frustrating for Scapey because he's heading in the right direction for another round win, his third round win this year to add to Eastern Creek and Phillip Island. But Mark, he's never won all three. No, his teammates had a few clean sweeps. You can see Lance flashing on the headlights there as he comes up to alert slower traffic that he's coming through. But gee, I'll tell you what, he's going quick here. He's just brought the lap record down once again at 1.11.65. That's the fastest time we've seen all day. And he's really, really attacking this Sandow track. Two seconds, the gap over Mark Scape. Another 2.3 seconds, the gap between Tander in third and Mark Scape in second. I enjoyed that uh, little bit of a battle earlier. We saw how aggressive Mark Scape can be when Garth Tander nipped up on the inside and threatened to take his second position. And Scapey just turned it up an extra couple of notches and held by one, uh, rather Tander out. Radisic there, and now Bright has got through on Dick Johnson. So that has happened just in that last section of the track there because on our timing monitor, they flashed across the line with Johnson still ahead of Bright. So it's the other way around now. The Pertec Ford has got ahead of the Shell Ford. Ingle still hanging in there behind. Seaton Perkins at Barguana has now moved into the top 10. McConville dropped back to 12th and Murphy is in 11th. Yes, a good run from Tanda, 22-year-old former Australian Formula 4 champion. Oh, Russell alongside oh, DJ. Yeah, good battle there between Johnson, Bright and Ingle. Fighting over fifth place. Very, very tightly bunched back behind them. Cameron McLean at the front. He's still in 13th position. Commendable effort by uh, the Valvoline Cummins Commodore Jason oh. Mark Warner as we join, join seat there's Dick Johnson right alongside and it comes down to a breaking duel into turn one. Seaton will win this one and goes through one position better. So Dick Johnson now back into oh. eighth position. They're fighting hard though in the Shell Helix Ford. Age shall not weary them. 54 years of age, but Johnson just driving like a tiger here. You can see he had a bit of top end in that. Shell Ford, they got toward the end of the straight, he started to haul it back. Seaton was beautifully positioned on the inside of the Shell Mastercard turn and picked up another position. So Seaton has been struggling for speed today. He's been there, thereabouts, up in the top five, top seven cars, but nowhere near enough punch to be able to challenge Mobile Holden Racing Team. And we say it every round, that's because it's still a, a present problem for Dick. And we talk about his sinus problem, and we may even see it's a possibility that Dick might not race at Calder son Stephen will replace him for that round because he's going to have to go into hospital and have another operation. Was that number 15 oh, or something? He's oh, getting... I tell you, once I haven't had sinus in my life and burger, etc, etc, when you get it, it's the biggest pain in the brain you've ever had, I tell you, because just to get rid of it, well, it's such a major. That's what Dick was saying, how much it affects his concentration behind oh, the wheel. He said that it's causing him so much pain that he starts noticing people moving in the spectator area or a, yeah. a little bit of rubber rolls across the floor in the car. He's, he's got his mind completely off the job because of the pain that he's feeling in the front of his head. Cameron McLean on screen there. He has moved up into 12th position and his top privateer. There's McConville in the Warwick Fabrics. Commodore, of course, Cameron will drive with the Mobile One Holden Racing Team at Queensland Raceway for the Queensland 500 and also at the FAI 1000 at Bathurst later this year. Driver lineup still haven't been confirmed whether McConville will drive with Scape or with Lowndes and of course he will join Paul Morris as well. Now here's a Shell Helix replay of an earlier incident. Oh, what have we got here? Mark Noski. No, it's on Shelly hitting Scape. Dougal that's McDougal. That's... Oh look, did he keep it out of the sand? Looks like he did. It's okay, I keep thinking of Scapey as 15. <laughs> well they are the, uh, the whole HRT cars. This is a tremendous battle here. You've got McLean, McConville, Longhurst, and we go back behind him to Mark Larkham. Now Cameron McConville's giving McLean a nice old touch up here. Zippy. And he is surrounded by Fords. Oh, look at him. Here's oh, Mark Larkham, and, and Crompton is tucked in behind him. Here's the view from the back of Larkham's car with three laps to go. Well, Larkham just been sitting back and having a look at this tremendous battle. It's a good drive from Cameron McConville. Getting back into the groove or keeping him well on the pace as the year passes so that when he jumps into those Mobile One Commodores later in the year, he's uh, got some race experience behind him for 1999. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah, he's actually oh, he's... out of the car. He's lost a lot of fluid there. Oh, it's yeah. like coolant or something. So uh, he's not having a good day. 
looks like it's on the back, over on the back straight there, doesn't yeah, it? I think he's just pulled, pulled it off. The, I think he's on the uh, on the section of the circuit they don't use anymore. Yeah, over near XR8, XR6 corner. Oh, Oops. yes, something exciting. That's a shame. He's been having a terrible weekend. Yeah. He's had a terrible year, isn't he? Really, yeah. when you think about but an awesome drive in this last race because he's come from 7th to 10th. He just keeps going forward and then something happens and he goes back. This is your race leader, Greg Lowndes. Just to make a change. <laughs> <laughs> Two laps to go. Yeah, well, he's been absolutely dominant, the 25 year old. Originally from. Melbourne or Melbourne Districts. He now lives up in Queensland with his wife Natalie. He has been a sensation since he returned from a very unsuccessful season in Formula 3000 in Europe in 1997. A lot of people thought that he would have lost a lot of confidence and struggled to get back into the groove. From Heat 1 and Sandown in 1998, this man has proven he is right back on the pace. And his teammate from that year, Juan Montoya, currently leads the Kart World Series. So, although they no longer are in the same team and are on opposite sides of the globe, they're both leading their respective championships. So, Loud's on the way home. He'll come across in front of Mike Emery. And... He's on his way home, and if Scape stays where he is, he will win round six of the Shell Championship Series, and that'll be a very pleasant boost for him in terms of the points. I can just imagine Bill Woods at home watching this, uh, saying there's no such thing as a wrecked Saab. Saabs <laughs> can't be wrecked. They're wonderful. <laughs> Russell Engel and Glenn Seaton. This is the battle for sixth position. Seaton in seventh at the moment. And Dick Johnson there, just ahead of Larry Perkins. That's eighth and ninth. Greg Murphy with uh, a big dent in his bonnet, running in the top ten at the moment, courtesy of that Barguana exit. And there's McConville under siege from Larkham and Crompton. I'm just amazed that didn't... Oh, look at this. There's a bit of a tussle going on here. Yeah, you've got John Bauer, who's come from rear of grid, up into the 15th, uh, rather 16th position. So good work from the oh. Ken Ford. And that looks like Mark Noski, Noski. is it? Yes, it is. So Noski wanting to get through. And Thomas Mazira tagging onto the back of that... Uh, list of cars as well but this is your man Craig Lowndes he won't win the day but he will win the third and final and remain comfortably in the lead as Lowndes takes out the final race at Sandown Scaife will take the day and around for third well done Garth Tander a handy result there and Paul Radisic finishing in fourth that will be good enough to put the rat on the podium so a successful day not only for the mobile one team but the shell helix racing team as well paul radisic finishing in third overall on the day a very commendable effort that's great because the ceo of shell who's a real motor racing fan roland williams is retiring from shell today so this is basically his uh he said last no. his last uh, motorsport uh, officially but it's great to see uh, shell up on the podium there's Mark Scaife, three round wins, so he's won 50% of them. Well done, Scaife. Finishing second behind Lowndes. Tander, another sensible drive. Holden, one, two, and three from Radisic, Bright, Ingalls, Seaton, and Dick Johnson. Finishing in the top eight, well done to Dick. Perkins, Murphy, and McLean, top privateer. We'll be back right after this to wrap things up. Well, I'll tell you what, Holden Racing Team has hit back with a sledgehammer at Sandown. An absolutely dominant performance which has sent the Holden fans into a frenzy. Right on cue. But a great day for the Fords as they try to close the gap on this dominant factory team and a very strong performance in the privateer ranks from Cameron McLean. Well done, Cameron. That car's going particularly well. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work. It's our best meeting of the year. Um, we're looking forward to the next one. The Greenfield Miles Falcons performing as good as it has, and we're, we're delighted. Congratulations. See Cameron McLean in action at the new Queensland Raceway in two weeks' time. Another man who's been doing a great job for Ford this afternoon. He really asked, is starting to get a handle on these shell Fords. That's the flying Kiwi, Paul Radisic. Come here. Don't worry about, don't worry about the booze. Thank you. For more Holden fans and Ford fans out there, but gee, I'll tell you what, you're, uh, you're starting to get that thing into shape. Yeah, it's coming along and uh, it's great to be on the dais here. It's just bit by bit we've been uh, chipping away at it and the Shell Helix car is getting better all, all, the, all the time. Queensland Raceway, you had a run up there uh, a week ago or so. How's it looking? 
Yeah, it's looking real good. I mean, obviously, we're starting with a, the home advantage, so I'm looking forward for the next round. Congratulations, Paul Radisic. Expect to see a lot more of the Shell 18 Ford in action in 1999. Well, I said before, it was a sledgehammer. They really have smashed the opposition here today. The second part of that equation is our championship leader, Craig Lowndes. It doesn't seem to matter whether you win or Scafie wins, you blokes are uh, always at the pointy end of the field. Well, I guess it's a credit to the team. Obviously, they've done a fantastic job with my new car, but with all the cars we build, and uh, really it's a testament to them. Obviously, the cars are very even. Uh, Hidden, uh, not to say Hidden Valley, uh, Queensland Raceway, that's another new track for you blokes. Uh, how, you think you're going to be on the same form there? You haven't really tested there, have you? No, we haven't, and uh, really uh, hopefully we can get on the money early, and uh, really we hopefully we can get uh, the car up to shape, and, and that's what we'll be looking for. Congratulations, Craig Lowndes. Second today. As I call on James Atkins from our great series sponsor Shell to make the presentation to our overall winner today. He almost took a clean sweep, it wasn't for his pesky teammate, Mark Scaife. Congratulations. What a great drive, and I'll tell you what, that's really going to help your point situation. Well, obviously, uh, after Darwin, Mark, we didn't have a bit of a fight back, and uh, certainly the cars are very good here. It was a welcome return to form, and, uh, you know, I hope that young bloke just gives me a go for winning three in a row sometimes. I mean, he just knocks me off the last one each day. But, uh, I mean, it's obviously very competitive between us, and we're, uh, we're really, really enjoying it. Congratulations, Mark Scaife, the big winner at Sandown International this afternoon. As we head to Queensland Raceway, anyone could win. As we take a look at the championship points, there's been movement at the top. Jason Bright now moves into the top three. Russell Ingall has been pushed back. And Scaife remains there in fifth. Look at Garth Tander, the picture of consistency, but it is still Lowndes who leads the way. And Larry Perkins coming up there into the top ten. And Larry had a tough day. Well, the Mobile One Holden Racing Team steamroller continues. But, Barry, we're starting to see some other people come into the equation. And good to see Paul Radisic up on the podium. Well, it's great for the old Shell team, you know, to finally get up there. But it's a story of bad luck, really, for a lot of guys. You know, you take Crompton, for example, and John Bow, Barguana. And, uh, you know, they've had a terrible, terrible day, you know. And uh, as far as Crompton is concerned, your heart really goes out to him. He's been waiting for a really good drive. He's finally got one. And luck really just has not gone with him at all. Seems to be quite quite often that the, uh, the race could be decided in the first corner. Well, exactly that. You know, he stayed, tries to stay out of trouble. He moved out the way for Seton today. And Seton caught and spun him around. I mean, it's just really bad luck. All right, well, as always, plenty coming up on your home of Motorsport Network 10, starting with tonight. We've got the 500ccs. Indy cars are coming up, as always, the Kart World Series. They're coming up soon with the next round from Cleveland, Ohio. Check your local guides between midnight and 2. And, of course, our next round, round 7 of the Shell Championship Series from the new Queensland Raceway at Willowbank outside of uh, Ipswich. So we're looking forward to that. That's in two weeks' time. On behalf of Mark Oster and Barry Sheen, I'm Lee Diffie. See you outside of Ipswich. Oh! <laughs> 